Hey friends, it's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farm. Today we're going to be doing a really big harvest of my garden. I want to harvest both of my apple trees today. Then we'll head over to the raised bed garden where I want to harvest some tomatoes, some peppers. Also back behind there, I have some straw flowers that we need to harvest the seed from. I was already up this morning harvesting straw flower for a bride that's doing a porch pickup for a hair trial. And then I'm also going to start to harvest some dried flowers and even some dried sunflower heads for the Christmas tree we're going to do this year. So let's just get started. So I inherited these trees eight years ago. I'm not sure exactly what variety this tree is. We kind of call it a Macintosh because it tastes like that. But what I like to do is, this one has an earwig in it. So what I'm doing is dividing these apples into three different sections. So we have the good ones for us. Then in this bag, I have one for the horses that my husband works with. And then the ones that are really bad, that are just rotting away, I'm just gonna put those in the compost pile. I like to pick this tree a little sooner than most people might, mainly because once they start falling on the ground or rotting up here in the tree, then we start to have a really big yellow jacket problem. Oh no. Well, those ones will go to the horses now. But anyway, once that starts happening, this starts to become an area where no one wants to walk through. So I like to pick them earlier and process all of these as sauce, juice, cider, just cut them up and freeze them for the winter. Oh, I need like one of those big trampolines under here to catch all these. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, oh. gotcha. Oh. went and picked some from the other tree. Oh, put that one for the horses. Just beautiful, aren't they? Grab some of these banana peppers now. These are sweet bananas. I used to grow the Hungarian wax too. Those were a little bit hot for my liking. I like these sweet bananas better. Let's grab some of these jalapenos too. I think I want to make jalapeno popper dip this weekend. This tomato is celebrity. It's a good tomato. It's nice and early. I think there are better tasting tomatoes, but it is nice for an early tomato. This one is fireworks. It's a really nice one. Really beautiful, tasty tomato. So I've got some straw flour here where the seed's ready for harvest. You can see it gets kind of all poofy, like that. And so what I like to do is just put these in a paper bag because I'll sacrifice this one but it has this chaff on it that's going to take the seed and plant it elsewhere via the wind. So it can be a little hard to separate the chaff from the seed, but what I found works really well is to just go ahead and put the whole head in a bag and let's grab a couple because the seed is only the portion that kind of looks like fish food. You see, it's kind of just an explosion of the fuzzy chaff there. So to get those separated, what we do is we put them all in a paper bag, and then we want to add something heavy to a bag. I like to use a penny. You could use a couple pennies if you like. This one's a little bit wet, so I'm not going to put that in my bag. I don't want to risk having wet seed in there at all. But anyway, we'll add a penny to the bag. We'll shake it really, really, really hard for a long amount of time until the chaff separates from the seed. And then we can cut a small hole right here and all the seed will fall out and all the chaff will stay in the bag. Okay, I hope you won't mind my slightly messy kitchen. I haven't even really cleaned up yet. You can see I have some apples from yesterday in there. 
So I'm just gonna stick a couple of pennies in this paper bag before I cut the hole. And now I'm gonna shake it really well. I'll shut the sound off of this part because it'll be hard to listen to. All right, let's see if that's good enough. You wanna start with a really tiny hole in the corner here. Cause you don't want any of that chaff to come out. And now as I shake this out, what's coming out primarily is just the seed. We're getting a little bit of chaff there, but basically it's getting rid of all that fuzz for us and leaving us primarily just with that great straw flower seed. So this is a great tip and it works with a lot of seeds or the chaff is a little bit hard to get rid of and clean. You can use this trick for celosia too, and I'll show you a row I have back in the no-dig cut flower garden that I'm growing from Save Seed from I think two years ago. This is a variety from Florette, kind of a light colored variety, and you can see it started to go to seed. You can see the black seeds there. You can also just kind of shake this on your hand and the seeds will come out. But if you have a whole bunch that you wanna do, you can stick the, all the heads in a bag like this, just like we did inside. Now this bag already has a hole in it, so I'm gonna cover up the hole. Normally I would wait to cut the hole, but we'll give it a good shake. And there we have it. Lots more celosia seed for next year. And here's the row of celosia that I saved. I think it was last year, maybe it was the year before. I know we sold the celosia in bouquets. I think it was late fall when we were trying to sell those marigolds, which did terribly. I didn't sell any of those bouquets at the stand, but I did save the seed and it's doing really well here over in the no dig cut flower garden. Isn't that a great color? We might have to save some of this for the dried flower Christmas tree as well. So I wanna grab some of these sunflower heads that haven't been eaten by the birds for the dried flower Christmas tree. The dried flower Christmas tree is gonna be outside this year. I'm basing it on a tree that I saw at Longwood Gardens last year. It was their wildlife tree, and it did somewhat have a combination of dried flowers with grains and seeds for the birds. So I wanna do that. And I also found a local gourd farm so we can do a lot of bird feeder cups and also birdhouse gourds and then I think what I'll do is I'll just donate all of the birdhouses to a local nursing home because it's going to have a lot of birdhouses on it. So if I wanted to save seed from these sunflowers this is the stage that I would want to pick it to and either way whether I was saving it for seed I'm saving it basically as a head of seeds for the dried flower Christmas tree but I can show you I have a row of sunflowers that I just planted without filming from save seed I just want to remove all of this and then I just like to let these dry out in my basement and I thought it would be really cool to kind of put these on the dried flower Christmas tree as ornaments so that the birds can peck at them. So this row of sunflowers back by the arborvitaes is all save seed. I hadn't marked the seed and of course I have lots of different varieties growing so I'm not sure exactly what we'll end up with over here but I thought this would be nice to utilize this area for cut flowers and if we don't cut them the birds can enjoy them. I think I'll also grab a couple pears and put them in a brown paper bag see if they're ready or not. I think this tree did not like all the other trees around it being cut down. This tree did seem to take a hit after we had those other trees removed and the top started to die out almost immediately. So I really hope it will be okay. We've had issues with some blight on this tree before. So I hope we can save it. I hope it will be all right. Grace, what are you harvesting? You harvesting anything today? Checking on the weeds? Chris, you want a pear? You like pear? And try? Well, I think that's a pretty good morning harvest. I still have to harvest the entire driveway garden apple tree, but it's getting sunny and a little bit late now, and I'm sure it's covered in all kinds of bees and wasps. So I'll wait until tomorrow morning to go ahead and do that. So instead, let's head inside and finish up this video by making a tomato pie together. 
and then I'll catch you sometime soon where we'll process all these apples into apple butter, apple cider, apple pie, all those good things. So I normally alter this recipe just based on what I have on hand in the garden, but it does seem to help to put some Parmesan cheese at the base of your pie crust so that it doesn't get all mushy on you. Then I've got our tomatoes that I've chopped and drained about a teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and about half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I usually only do about eight pieces of bacon cooked and crumbled. This time I decided to caramelize an onion and add that as well. A nice thick layer of our homegrown basil chopped up. And then I'll top the whole thing with two cups of shredded cheddar cheese that I've mixed with a fourth a cup of mayonnaise. And then just a light dusting of cayenne. I'm gonna cover that lightly with foil. And we'll bake it at 375 for 30 minutes with the foil and then 375 for 30 more minutes without. Well, that tomato pie is absolutely fantastic. You can really alter it depending on your taste and your diet. You don't have to probably put in the bacon. You could probably even get rid of some zucchini by putting that on the base instead of the cheese like I did, and that's probably healthier too. So Grace and I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens, and we hope to see you sometime soon. Bye.